What's the process like? How long does it take? How painful it is? Pass a needle over that ultrasound into the ovaries and suck all the eggs out. Is that painful? Well, I think only the injection part, I would say, mm -hmm. is painful because Again, these injections are, anyone who has diabetes would know, you have these pens which you can dial the dose. Yeah. Just press a button and it goes in. Insurance is not really a new word in our dictionary. We all know about it. We, we work with it, whether it's medical insurance, health insurance, life insurance, house insurance, and so on and so forth. But today we're going to be talking about a new kind of insurance, somewhat a social insurance, an insurance against maybe infertility, you could say. We're going to be talking about egg and embryo freezing and I have with me here Meghna Saraugi, CEO of a tech company called Mirar and uh, welcome Meghna to the show thank you so and much, thank you so much for being here. Why don't you tell us a little about Mirar because when you first told me about Mirar, I think it was very innovative <laughs> and very different. So Mirar is an augmented reality tech company um, focused on AR VR. And uh, we are on a mission to revolutionize or change the way people shop. Um, I was inspired or I would say mesmerized when I saw filters on Instagram and uh, Snapchats. And that's when I thought if these filters could come in retail shopping, everything that you're shopping online, you can try it and see it on yourself before you actually buy it. And uh, we've been now focusing on jewelry and beauty industry. We've seen how the ROI has changed drastically. So from an era of brick and mortar to e-commerce, now it's an era of experiential shopping. So that is what we So are people ready to accept going to a jewelry store and saying, okay, I won't actually pick up the, the necklace and I wear it on my neck. I will see it in augmented reality. So uh, not really, to be honest, but uh, especially when you're shopping online, everything that you see, if you're able to see it on yourself, it just makes the overall experience more intuitive. Um, when you go to a store, it just gives you more options to see inventory than what is in the store. Right. So usually you, you can't get all the you know inventory in the store because it's a very capital intensive industry. Any particular brands you're working with? So we work with a lot of brands including Tanishk, Kalyan, Malabar, okay. um, in Calcutta, Senko. Okay. And are you moving from jewellery onto something else you were saying that you're now yes. moving on? To? So beauty is an industry which is very close to my heart. Because as a girl growing up, I was a very underconfident girl. And I was always, I always thought makeup doesn't look good on me. Uh, until I started seeing so many virtual looks on myself. And I was like, wow, I can pull off this as well. So we are now working on uh, beauty and skincare industry. Where every product, every lipstick before uh, making it a purchase, you can see how it looks on you. And how did this underconfident girl actually go and ask for funding? <laughs> um, so, it was quite difficult. I just think uh, being a Torian, um, I'm stubborn. And uh, one thing I found about myself is that when people tell me I can't do something. You have to do it. I have to do it. I just have to prove people wrong. So, I was told I will never be able to raise funds because I'm a girl. Because I don't come from a tech background. And uh, because I was lazy. I just had to prove them wrong. So I actually got my first round of funding without any team member. Okay. Was it difficult to build a tech platform without being from the tech background? Absolutely. You know, it's, it's literally like a different language for me. But I just think I had that passion. Um, and I had right people who were constantly backing me and supporting me. So some of my mentors stood by me and uh, just guided me through the right steps. Okay, coming back to the topic of today, where did you and how did you hear about egg freezing? So one of my very close mentor and friend, uh, almost four years back when uh, you know I met her and she realized that I wasn't dating anyone at that point. And uh, she just recommended me, why don't you consider egg freezing? I did have a couple of questions and I was like, I, I had never heard the concept of egg freezing then. So I did ask her, and uh, I got a little bit of understanding, but to be honest, I did not take it seriously. Because in my head, I was like, okay, when I will meet someone, you know, that's when I'll decide. Um, but I realized that the biological clock for a woman is ticking. And especially as soon as you enter 30, there is just so much of pressure 
um, you know, to have a kid. Right. So I think that was that was the reason she was suggesting me to consider egg freezing, but uh, I didn't do it then. So to set the context right, uh, Meghna walked into my consulting room one day and she said, "I want to do my egg freezing." And I said, um, "Do you know anything about egg freezing?" And she said, "Yes, I mm -hmm. do know, but I have a lot of questions." And that's when we decided that instead of actually discussing the question and answers there, we said, "Why don't we shoot a podcast?" And we'll just take the questions right there. It's totally unrehearsed, and um, we'll get the answers there as well. Mm -hmm. So, shoot your questions, <laughs> whatever Firstly, you. Firstly, what is egg freezing? So, egg freezing is basically. Women produce eggs every month hmm. and those eggs, if they are not utilized that particular month, get destroyed. You can't store them for the next month. Your periods could stop for the next six months does not mean your eggs are not being used and destroyed. So in egg freezing, we take those eggs outside of the human body and then plunge it into liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees centigrade for future use. This is basically what is egg freezing. And then I've heard something called embryos freezing. So how is that different from egg freezing? So eggs are the gametes which women have. Sperms are the gametes which men have. When we combine these eggs and sperms together is when we form the embryo. That is the fertilized egg and that is when it divides and creates the baby that is born at some point in time. So the unfertilized gamete of a woman is the egg. After fertilization, it becomes the embryo. And at what age or when do a woman knows that she should consider egg freezing? There is no particular age at which you should consider egg freezing. But you have to understand that there is a biological clock, as you said, which is ticking. And as age increases, not only does the number of eggs that the woman has decreases, but the quality of it also reduces. You have to first also understand that men produce sperms all their lives. But women are born with a finite number of eggs. They don't create or produce more eggs in their lifetime. And as you lose eggs every month, almost a thousand every month. So at some point in time, all your eggs are going to um, you know, perish. So before they reduce in number significantly, before they reduce in quality significantly, you should do your egg freezing. A ballpark figure would be probably in your late 20s or before the 30s or maybe in your early 30s would be a better time to freeze your eggs. And how do I know if my uh, eggs are good enough to be frozen? So we, there are two aspects, quantity and quality. You can ascertain quantity, but you can't ascertain quality. So quantity can be ascertained by, there are some tests for ovarian reserve testing. Two primary ones, two important ones that we use are one is blood for AMH or anti-Mullerian hormone. Along with that, we can do an ultrasound, but of course a vaginal ultrasound, ideally done on the day two, three, four of periods. At that time, we can actually count the number of eggs which are there in the ovary at that particular time for that particular month. And a correlation of these two, AMH and antral follicle count, would more or less give you your ovarian reserve. And uh, where do I go for this? How do I know? which clinic, which uh, doctor or uh, like where, where should I go about it? So I think the best and the only place anyone in India should be going for is Renew Healthcare in Kolkata. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, I like no, that. but jokes apart, I think majority of the clinics would be now doing egg freezing. It's a, it's not that difficult to process. It's not technically challenging, but because you're ensuring for the future obviously you want to select the best person there is or at least in your mind the best person there is for doing this job for having your precious eggs with that person i think what is most important is transparency yeah. so maybe if you i always tell people that you should google your doctor today in our day and age reviews what is your presence on social media how are you talking about uh, on social media are you sharing information or are you involved only in you know what in my 40 years of experience this is what i have uh, kind of come to are you closed door 
So it starts from there. And once you've chosen a particular couple of clinics that you wish to go to, sit across the table, have all your questions. If your doctor is not open to answering your questions before you get into the program, then probably the doctor is not right for you. Then of course, your, your questions need to have a satisfactory answer. Of course, beyond that, you can always take a tour of the facility. See what it's like. I mean, where does IVF happen? Because that's not something you've ever been exposed to. So maybe seeing around and, you know, just getting a good mental feel of the place would make you more comfortable. Lastly, if the doctor allows, if there are patients who are willing, like yourself, to come forward and say, I am willing to talk about egg freezing, then it always helps to have another one who's probably done egg freezing before and the clinic can introduce the two of you. And you can have yeah. those questions also answered, which the doctor can't answer for you. What was the experience like? What did you go through? What problems did you face? So I think you should go through this entire journey before you decide who or where you want to freeze your eggs with. No, I think that's very helpful because, you know, uh, I only wish I was living in Calcutta and my life would be so much easier because I could come here. But I've recently moved to a new city and it's, it's right. honestly very difficult. So tell me, uh, once suppose I've decided, okay, this is the doctor I want to go ahead with, what's the process like? How long does it take? How painful it is? So the process is divided into two parts. Even before you get into the egg freezing process, you need to, you're insuring for the future. Yeah. So you need to make sure that this is the best you've done. So in terms of stopping smoking, hookah, shisha, drinking, recreational drugs, making sure you're in a healthy weight category, you're not obese, um, you kind of start taking multivitamins, preconception vitamins, make sure all your hormones are in place, your thyroid, your prolactin, vitamin B12, vitamin D, something we do for all other fertility patients also when they come in for an IVF. You want to be the best for yourself. In, in egg freezing, even more so, because you're doing it for the future. So once all this is done, and we've spent about maybe a month or two doing all of this, and also correcting any problems which might be there, then we get into the actual process of IVF or egg freezing. During this time, on the second day of period, certain blood tests are done. Certain injections are now started. The purpose of doing these injections are to get as many eggs as we can out of that woman in that particular month so we don't have to do it over and over again. Monitoring is done by doing ultrasounds and certain blood tests over specific days. The total stimulation, that is these injections, continue for about maybe 9 to 12, 13 days. Once we know that lot many follicles have formed, now these follicles are nothing but balloons filled with water and having an egg inside them. So once we know that we have plenty of these balloons with us on ultrasound, we give another special injection and 36 hours later, that lady will now undergo anesthesia. Why anesthesia? So she's not, she's not uncomfortable during the procedure. During that time, we do another vaginal ultrasound, pass a needle over that ultrasound into the ovaries and suck all the eggs out. Roughly takes anything between 5 to 15 minutes, depending on how many eggs we have to recover. And that's the end of the story. Those eggs are now passed on to the embryologist who freezes them at minus 196 degrees centigrade, the woman is good to go home. Okay, and is that painful? Well, I think only the injection part, I would say, yeah. is painful because, again, these injections are, anyone who has diabetes would know, you have these pens which you can dial the dose, yeah. just press a button and it goes in. Yeah. We have similar injections in IVF now. So, but yes, it is a needle at the end of the day. Yeah. And it is going to be a, a lot of blood tests. It is going to be coming to the clinic and waiting for our scans. And you know those, those 10 days you have to disrupt your normal daily life. That could be a little painful. And some of the injections. The egg collection is under anesthesia. So it's totally painless. And you're back home in two hours time. Back to your normal life the next day.